Hi, I'm Brent, and this is a follow-up to my last video talking about narrow bandwidth filters. I got a couple of questions about how this might work towards fast lenses, so I thought we could uh, insert some of the calculations and see how that worked out. In my previous video, with a link provided here, I used my Hyperstar to compare the signal that we get back from narrow band imaging with 6 and 12 nanometer bandwidth filters. I was surprised to learn that these 6 nanometer filters actually stopped down my Hyperstar so that instead of operating at f2.2, it was more like it was operating at f2.5. So some of the questions came up, is the same thing going to happen for fast lenses? So I'm going to look at some of the some simulations to see how this is going to work with lenses that don't have the same central obstruction as the Hyperstar. So I'd previously shown, using some calculations provided on a Cloudy Nights forum, where you can determine the angle of incidence of photons depending on your scope's configuration. So I'd shown that for a few configurations of my Edge 9.25 uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. From that, I was able to show how the transmission changes as a function of that incident angle, and by comparing where the photons are coming from, you can get a feeling of why we were stopping down those images because we were getting less transmission of our signal of interest as that incident angle increases. What's different with lenses? We don't have this central obstruction, so we actually have a little bit more of a continuous sampling of all of those angles, and that's going to change the apparent transmission of the total filter. After going through this video and thinking about a few things, one, I found a few bugs with this calculation that I'll update, and I also optimized the estimation of the effective index of refraction. So that's resulted in an update for these charts, and that's what we'll be covering. First off, we need to consider the transmission shift uh, to calculate these characteristics. You can use this equation, but to use this equation, you need a index of refraction, this n effective. I previously used a value of 2.2 based on some guessing and checking. And after a little time thinking about it, I realized that I could kind of check this value so that I get a similar transmission as to what I observed uh, out of my images. And when I did that, it seemed like a effective index of refraction that worked a little bit better was 2.05 so that it produced a average 78% transmission like we saw in the data. The next thing that I fixed was looking back at the code that is used to execute this, is that in the function get theta, this first line was commented out, and it was replaced with this line, which was multiplying our x coordinate times zero and y coordinate times zero, which was zeroing out some of the x and y factors uh, that are actually needed for the calculation. So I commented out this line, uncommented the first line, and when we do those changes to the code, we actually get distributions that kind of show a little bit more smooth characteristics like we would expect. So here the color represents the telescope configuration that is used. So this orange distribution shows my edge 9.25 with the 0.7 reducer showing that most of the angles come in from about 1 to 5 degrees. When we go to that hyperstar at f2.2, we can see that the angles come in from about 2.5 degrees up to about 15 degrees. I also have an edge 11 with its hyperstar, and now I've included that fast Samyang lens that at the 135 millimeter f2 lens. We can see by removing that central obstruction, we actually get angles all the way down from zero with most of the contribution coming in around this like five to seven um, degree increment, but we also have contributions all the way out to about 20 degrees. Now, if we look back at this transmission curve, we can see that that transmission drops off as a function of the incident angle. So if we were to use that six nanometer filter for the Samyang filter, as soon as we hit kind of this like five degree angle, you're going to start losing light by quite a bit as you go out to steeper and ste steeper angle. So we can see that a lot of the contributions of that lens are going to be filtered out. So I went through and did the same calculations and, calc and updated the average transmission uh, using this updated index of refraction. And when I go back and look at the numbers, now we see when we did the 
edge that shoots at f2.2, we get the 0.78 that I saw previously. When we apply this to the edge 11 with Hyperstar, we're only getting 63% transmission now. And when we're looking at this lens with about the same uh, focal ratio, we are getting about a 64% transmission. So similar to the calculations I showed in the last video, even if your lens was set up at f2.0, it's more like it's shooting at an f2.5 that's giving you this stopped down effect. One of the other outputs from the code that was used is that you can actually get a feeling of the um, transmittance at the chip. So here we're seeing transmittance as a function of location on the chip. And while when we look at some of our hyperstar configurations, we don't really see any drop off on the edges. But when we look at this Samyang 135 millimeter filter, we can see that there is some drop off even for 12 nanometers, but most notably at the six nanometer filter, there's quite a bit of drop off. At first, I was thinking, is this vignetting? And it's no, it's not really vignetting because what we're seeing here is the angular cutoff, the angular dependence of the cutoff for these particular types of filters. If the contribution of the light out here is that is coming in from uh, very steep angles, then you're going to get a lot more attenuation out here. And I started thinking this would be something that would just be captured with flats. However, I don't think this kind of effect is going to be corrected by flats because if you use white light or even skylight, this particular response is based on a monochromatic line source and its transmission. Whereas if you're using a white light source, it'll just start transmitting light at this particular wavelength. So you're not going to see this fall off that is going to occur for a monochromatic source. So I can imagine this creating a lot of challenges, especially if you're doing a mosaic and it's something that your flats may not correct for. So those are my thoughts. I don't have data to put next to that to actually compare, but seems like something you might want to pay attention to. All right, so what can we say from this? Narrow band filter blue shift will affect the transmittance for any fast optics, whether it's lenses or reflectors with a central obstruction. I updated the values for the schmidt cassegrain telescope angles and average transmittance using the new uh, index of refraction estimations and the adjusted code. So for the Samyang 135, what can I say? I would say use the 12 nanometer bandwidth filters because the six nanometer bandwidth filters only transmitted 64% of the desired signal. I haven't done the calculations to verify this, but I would estimate that your signal of interest loss is likely to be much more than the background rejection that you're getting from the narrower bandwidth filter. From this, I can say narrower is not always better when you're starting to use some of these fast optics. And I also think that uh, when we think about flats and the, de and the spatial dependence that you're going to see on your particular chip, uh, some of these effects may not be accounted for when you do your flats. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave comments or questions. Thanks.